Radio as Informative is a key resource for emergency information, but at its core, it's meant to be fun. On today's episode of On Air in Michigan, a conversation with Tim Hart, who is a senior marketing consultant at Midwest Communications in Coldwater. Tim is also the host of a segment he calls Know Your Beer. The segment has enhanced his station's relationship with local businesses and the community and is a great example of innovation in our industry. It was a fun conversation, which came with some samples, which never hurts. Enjoy On Air in Michigan with our guest, Tim Hart. Tim Hart, Senior Marketing Consultant with Midwest Communications. Tim, thanks for joining us. No, you bet. I'm happy to be here. So, Tim, your segment is called Know Your Beer. Where did this idea come from? So, so Know Your Beer, all about craft beer, actually came from my oldest son, Sam. So he and some other engineers, uh, they brew some beer up in the Detroit and Ann Arbor area. And he's like, Dad, all you drink is Bush Light, Bud Light, and all, you know, because I'm from St. Louis. That's right. So um, that's my beer from St. Louis, it's you know, Budweiser, there, right? I, that's right. what I drink. And he's like, I, I think in this day and age, you need to expand your palate. I'm like, expand my palate. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Dad, you need to try some of these IPAs and some of these other wheat beers and a Kolsch and a Sasan. And I'm like, what? He's like, <laughs> and you could put it on the radio. He said, you could just talk to somebody yeah. and explain all the beers. And then you could do it like that. And I said, well, we got to get a format down. We got to get this figured out. And I said, well, why don't we start with you three engineers and that's really how we started with interviewing Sam, yeah. my son, interviewing Rache Kirkland, who is like a wealth of beer knowledge of the history of beer and how it came about. And he explained how uh, almost back in the caveman era, they, you know, when farming started taking place, that's about when beer started taking place. Yeah. Cause you know, you, you get all your crowd, you get your stuff, you put it over here, it ferments. And you know, about a week later, you're like, oh, I'm thirsty. Oh, and then they're happy people. I said, so the caveman's happy. He says, I think it was. So anyway, that's kind of how it, it came about. And how long ago was that? So 2017. Okay. So 2017, you come up with this idea. Talk about how it's evolved from that first episode to kind of where it is now. Well, I will tell you the first X amount of episodes, I really didn't quite know which direction we're going because I, I'm the person that is asking the questions right. and I've got the expert. That's who I'm talking to. And so, you know, sometimes I had to do a little research and get that figured out. And, and as we evolved after about the fifth or so episode or sixth episode, I was like, okay. And I just started calling breweries and saying, hey, here's what we do. We're, we've got a radio station in Coldwater, but it'd also be on our website. I'd like to come up, do an interview, find out about your place. And then we kind of got the format down of the first segment. When I go there, we try to do five or six segments. Okay, sure. So the first segment is... Hey, Sam's Brewery, how, how'd you get started? How did it all work? And how did you get to this building and, and opening your brewery? And then the second episode, which is, you know, as we go second, third, fourth, fifth episodes, um, it gets a little better and a yeah. little more lively because we start tasting the beer. Well, that, yeah, it tends to happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I brought some today. We'll taste it a little while. Right, well, how do you pick the breweries? Well, I just really at random or okay. people suggest them. Yeah. So I have a lot of people that, uh, that I've interviewed over the years and they're like, man, you need to go to my buddy's brewery because what's interesting is that all of these breweries, you know, how some, in some businesses, oh, I can't tell you my secrets. I'm not, when you're in the beer business, you're so welcome to tell everybody, your competitors, everybody about what you're doing and what would be better for them. And it's kind of a, a quite a community that, yeah. you know, you find. And, and so then they recommend other places. And then I got a list from the, you know, Michigan Brewers Guild. And they said, hey, Tim, these are all the people that participate with us. Yeah. And they gave me names and numbers. And so I kind of go down the list and, and I'm getting ready to make another big fall run here. And, and um, I try to do two breweries when I, when I go to a town, yep. if I can, and then do about four or five segments with them. We talk all the time at the MAB about the need for creativity in, in broadcasting, right? Because our industry has evolved so much. And this is very much a segment where there's a community relationship, as you've mentioned. You're supporting local businesses. You're highlighting local businesses. But it's a fun segment, too. What has this meant for, for your stations and, and the way that maybe you have some notoriety within you, your community, the cold water community? Well, it's interesting is that it's really um – covering all age ranges, Yeah. okay? So we've got the young people, we've got the older people. You know, I went to a meeting the other night and, um, you know, I had tea in my cup and the person looked and said, 
for a guy that drinks a lot of beer, you're drinking tea. What are you doing? I'm like, you can't drink beer all the time. <laughs> but but so he was probably about 40. Okay. And then I go to, you know, uh, like a parish council meeting and we've got uh, older ladies who are about 80. Well, all you talk about is beer on there. I listen all the time. But it, it what it is, is it's a fun, engaging segment. You know, it's that topic beer that everybody, you know, kind of lights up about. Yep. And we try to do things where we also teach people just a little bit about, you know, how do you keep your beer cold huh? Yeah. when you're out on the lake? Yeah. There's tricks to that. How do you bring a warm six pack home? And then, man, you just need one beer right now. What do you do? Yeah. Well, we talk to people about how they can you know, get their first beer cold. And did you know how to do that? I don't. I'm actually, I would like to take some notes. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, the Rache Kirkland, one of my very first episodes, he's like, okay, so what you do is you pull one beer out, you get a paper towel or a couple of paper towels, you wet the paper towels, okay. you wrap them around the beer, then you put it into the freezer that way. Because if you just put it into the freezer, you're not making as much hmm. contact with moisture and wetness and coldness and if you want your beer cold quickly, you do that. And, and by the paper towel being all wet, it, uh, it makes it that much. So, so that's one way to get, you know, one beer cold quick. Actually, you could do the whole six pack if you wanted. But let's say you're out on the lake and you want to get your beer and keep it cold the whole time. Well, there's a procedure with salt, water, and ice. And you say salt, well, the salt reacts with the ice, which reacts with this, which then makes it a much colder temperature sure. within your cooler. And I'm like, holy cow. Well, and I get a lot of comments about stuff like that. I'm going to test this theory tonight. Maybe maybe a couple times. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. Uh, so talk about, you know, as you go into these breweries and you're having these conversations, you know, what are they telling you about? The, the the power of broadcasting because they wouldn't be doing this if they didn't think there was some value to this what have they told you about the power of our industry well they're trying to reach people yeah and as we know um radio by far reaches a number of people out there in all different age ranges all different genres you know radio's free yeah. and uh a lot of these places in some cases startups Okay, and in some cases, maybe three to five years, they've been in operation. Well, it's not like they have enormous marketing money to say, hey, come to our brewery. Right. You know, generally they don't because most of the time that brewer's there all the time. And then they got the general manager and there if they got food then that's a whole nother operation. And so if you just said, hey, here's a restaurant that sells stuff. Well, now here you got like a, a brewery restaurant that makes stuff yeah. and sells stuff. And, you know, it's quite a dynamic uh, with the people and quite a dynamic with the personalities. As I, I talked to a lot of people, I said something about engineers earlier, but, you know, the chemistry yeah. of making craft beer is so scientific and, and, and also trial by error. Yep. <laughs> you know, some batches are not as good as other that batches. That's true. And, and then they got to do a little, you know, manipulating. But it's... um um. You know, for people out there listening, it, it's just a fun segment that they can get. And for the uh, breweries, it's a way for them to tell the world because, again, we're telling everybody when we're broadcasting and there's just no more powerful thing. And I tell them, God, if you ever have advertising money, that's the place to put it. Yeah, well, that's a, that's a great example of just why radio is, is so powerful. And so the segments themselves... They're pretty short, right? A couple minutes? Yeah, three to five minutes. You know, it depends on how talkative that other person is. Because mm -hmm. even though I'm talking a lot right now, mm -hmm. generally I'll ask a question and then they go on. Because yeah. you can feel, you know, like their passion. When they start talking about their beer and how it was created and how they brewed it and the hops and the yeast and all the stuff that goes with it, they're just like, they get all excited. Yeah. And you can just see it. Just see it. It's fun. It's really a lot of fun. What has uh, this done for your relationship with your audience? You know, has this helped you know, bring in new people? You said that, you know, this is a segment that attracts people of all age ranges and it's fun. Have you brought in new, new audiences? Well, now in our particular market, a little bit hard to tell because sure. we are a long time uh, new sports weather. People tune us in for that and, you know, school reports and everything. And so what we found, though, is that this gives us that little bit of extra fun and humor. And not that we don't want to always continue to do the news because that's what we're about in, yeah. in cold water. But uh, this is just so different. And I think that's why people um, really like it. And we run it, you know, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. A new segment starts each week. And um, and then we do, you know, you do some reruns over the time because yeah. of that. But there's not a day that goes by 
that somebody doesn't mention it no matter where I'm at. And I just find that fascinating because when we first started, it was like, Hey, Dan, you got a, you got radio. Why don't you just talk about beer and, you know, know your beer. And then of course, like, Hey, what about know your spirits and stuff? So we, we've branched just a little bit there because, uh, there's some distilleries in, in yeah. downtown Detroit that I've been to and man, it's a, it's just really exciting. It's interesting. Very interesting. Truly expanding that palette. <laughs> <laughs> so I know you brought some samples. I did bring I, some samples. I'd be remiss not to, you know, indulge my guest with, you know, trying this thing out. So walk us through, you know, okay, if, if this was, we'll call it the MAB Brewery. All right. And we, you're talking to us about, you know, our latest. So talk us, walk us through how a segment would go. Okay. So I would sit down and I'd say, hey, well, in this case, we'll, we'll make you two Bandits Brewery out of cold water because Perfect. that's the beer I there got There you go. Today. Even and I better. appreciate them <laughs> supplying us. There you and go. I might even have some to leave with you. There so, you go. Okay. Uh -huh, just try to take care of you. They won't last long, but I okay. Don't, <laughs> That's okay. I'm just trying to take care of you because well, then you can come visit us down there. So what I would do is say, uh, you know, hey, today we're with Sam Clement and we're uh, here talking about beer. We've we've learned how Sam has, you know, become a brewer and how they opened Two Bandits Brewing and everything. And then now we want to try some of the beers. And so we would let's let's take this let's take this June Moon. Okay. So we get this out, and uh, I will tell you that at some places. There's a glass, you know, a 12 ounce glass, and they tend to, oh, let's fill it up. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're no. sampling. We're sampling here. So you get a little bit of beer right, right. there. Well, here, what you said. You said, okay, all right. That's good. Yeah, that's, pour. yeah, yeah. We're, so yeah I'll no, give you that. No shame in the pour. That's fine. I'll give you that. And then me as the host, I would take a little sample as they would tell me what is in it. And so right now, this is the June moon. Okay. Okay. And so then they would say, tastes like June ripened strawberries, front, middle, and finish, slightly sweet, slightly tart, very satisfying. It's the perfect start to the festival season. So now take a little sample. Here's Cheers. To you. Oh, that's very good. It is very good. It, it is very good. It's smooth. <laughs> it's very it's good. It's not over fruity. I like that. You Quite know, a bit. It doesn't have a, that sometimes those big aftertaste where you go, mm, mm. You know, that's, no, that's good. That, 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 so it's a nice one. No yeah. problem taking a second drink. I'll tell you that. <laughs> so that's a strawberry wheat ale. Okay. Okay. And so for me, that is more my style Okay. because I, at times I'll get, they got stouts and porters and I always tell the people, I'm like, okay, now listen, I'm not a big stout or porter. I do not like the dark beers, but I'm going to go through it and I'll give you my honest opinion. Yeah. And so then again, we do that one and then we're like, okay. Well, now let's try. We're going to try something different this time. Now, this is Zed is Dead. Okay. Okay. So, this is a whole different ball game here. And we're saving a little bit for the, you know, technician. Oh, yeah. Team. Yeah. No, Dan, Dan, Dan's on. producing. Dan, Dan will get some, too. <laughs> Dan will get some, too. Yeah. Okay. So, this is Zed is Dead. Now, this would be one of my wife's um, kind of favorite okay. beers here. And so, Zed is Dead. It's an amber ale. So, you got a little bit of the, the color there. It's an ale. It's got uh, 8.3 ABV. Oh, yeah. So it's a little heavier. I like it's it. It's a little heavier. And it's got a little bit of a kick. Yeah, that's good. You know very what good. I'm saying? With the, with the ABV. And a lot of times you got to watch that, you know, the alcohol by volume because, you know, some of them are a little higher than uh, the 4.5 or the 5% right. beers. And then you're starting to slug them down. You're like, mm -hmm. yeah, no, we don't want to like drink two beers. Yeah, no, I don't want to be making decisions here, you know, after drinking too many of these. So, but right. this is very good. Yeah, so, so you got Zed is Dead. Now that's got a little bit different taste at the end. But again, okay. it's got a little bit of caramel sweetness in it too. Yep. You know, you could taste a little bit of that. So, yeah. so that would be Zed is Dead, and that's an amber ale. I would say two for two right now. What's that? Two for two so far. Two for two. Yeah. So now, Thick as Thieves. Now, Thick as Thieves, this is a Blood Orange Vanilla Milkshake IPA. All right. Okay. So... A milkshake IPA. A milkshake IPA. I can tell you right now, this one already it has my curiosity. Well, see, I even gave you a little extra. Yeah, so yeah. I, no, knew, I knew. Right. I know how you are here all right, now. All right. So this one, it, uh, juicy, creamy. It's easy to drink. Um, it is got like, a, again, when we talk about creamy, you'll, you'll taste that in okay. there. So what's oh, your yeah. opinion? That is unique. I will, <laughs> I will say that. That is unique. It is. That is very unique. It's, it's a different. And you know what? See how it kind of surrounds your tongue a little bit too? And stays with you through it. It yeah. is surrounded, yes. Yeah. yeah. Not, it's not one of my, you know, now if I was drinking beer, I would probably choose the June Moon. 
Then I might go to the Z is dead. You might go just something the for everyone's palate. I will say. How about that? Exactly. There you go. That's exactly right. So, so then we would come to the Brewberry. Now, okay. this happens to be a blueberry wheat beer. So again, if you like, um, you know, you like, if you like the June Moon, you know, in that, you're going to like that same this. family right here. Yes, it is. It is. It is. All right, let's try this. Oh yeah, you can smell the blueberry too. That's that, that's very good. Yeah. Now you you know though, and it's and it's, but it, it has a little bit of a fuller taste than this June Moon does too. So, you know, if you like, you know, you like your Budweisers or your Lagers, any of that type of thing, you're gonna like these two because again, they're not overly fruity. Okay. And so what we would do is go through those beers, then we would talk about it, and um, you know, it's just and so when people are like, man, you're always tasting beer on on the radio and stuff, I'm like, yeah, well, yeah. I'd like to go with you. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's, you, you've carved out a very good job <laughs> description. This is, you've done a good job carving out something very special for yourself. Good job. And we get a variety of sponsors, you know, and it's not just, uh, you know, uh, bars and grills. So we mm -hmm. get a variety of people that sponsor and, and it runs often enough so that, it, you know, repetition sometimes is key. Um, we're looking to expand a few things on other stations and we're looking to, you know, I'm personally looking to put it out on a variety of stations out there because... I think broadcasters can make money with this. I think they can take a packaged program, have their commercials within it, and make it a nice little thing that they make money, everybody makes money. Because I think once they, they put it on their air and run it enough, just like we did, you're going to find the audience can be, hey, that is something different. I like that. Well, Tim, you've probably brought the best uh, gifts that this show will ever have. <laughs> so I, I really appreciate that. Uh, it's an incredible concept, and I'm glad it's been successful. It's been a pleasure chatting with you about it. Uh, Tim Hart, Senior Marketing Consultant with Midwest Communications. The show is called Know Your Beer. Tim? Hey, cheers. Cheers. Cheers to you, buddy.